driven by your Southern California Honda dealers. The Worthy Clap, big game, James Worthy, Robert Ory, I'm Chris McGee. We've got Ali Clifton joining us in a little bit. Trudell and Brez will be running the postgame locker room. Uh, if the Lakers had lost, I was about to go right into the 20 turnovers for 19 points in the scoring drought. You can still go into it. I'm going to, <laughs> but we're not going to start with that. We're going to start with the uh, physical playoff type of battle, grind it out game, Rob. Lakers down 10 in the fourth quarter, two of the better defenses in the league, and the Lakers find a way to come back, tie it, go to OT, and get a win. You know, was it you that asked me what the score of this game was going to be? Someone asked me, I said it's going to be 103 to 98. I was, you were close. I was close, uh, man. In OT. Yeah, but yeah. hey, this is one of those games where you knew it was going to be a grinded out game. You had two teams that put they, they hang their hat on defense. And if you yeah. think about this New York Knicks team, you know, nobody thought they would be good. But they're playing good defense. They got a veteran point guard in D. Rose who comes off the bench and adds energy and excitement. You got the most improved player in Julius Randle. But what impressed me the most was Andre Drummond. Andre Drummond going out and getting 18 rebounds, kind of coming out of his slump because yeah. we know he's a 20-plus rebounder. And I hate to say this, but Ali called it. Ali said he was going to have a good game rebounding. He got 18, so I'm happy that he got it out it's of snowing his Wait a minute. <laughs> You're actually... Referring to Allie's correct comment? Yeah. James, you don't Her? have to point it out, though. Oh, I'm sorry. I just, I just want to make sure because it's the first. But uh, I give credit when credit is due sometimes. <laughs> I, I, I agree with you, Rob. Uh, you know, the significance of, of, of the win for both teams. You know, the Lakers still have that wishful scenario that they could move up to the sixth spot. And, and New York needed this game because they want to have home court advantage. So it was a big game, and New York came to play. Uh, the Lakers uh, didn't play as, as well as they did in the previous game, but, Gita, you said it. They grinded it out. They did. You know, with no point guard. When Caruso went down, I was a little bit concerned. Seven minutes into the game. I was a little bit concerned because without a, a true point guard, it's really hard to – to implement your offense and get it going with 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 Tucker, even though he's he did a really good job. But the Lakers just they stayed focused. You know, the 10 point lead by New York. I was getting a little a little nervous there, but they they figured out how to play. Wes Matthews, I mean, uh guys like that, Drummond, uh Rob already pointed out. Uh they they played together and they pulled out a nice win, much needed. They did, and, and that's what I was gonna say. Had they lost this game, we would absolutely be talking about the lack of ball handling with no LeBron, no Caruso, no Dennis Schroeder, well, the stagnant. experience of THT, but instead we're going to talk something different. But first, Kyle Kuzma led the Lakers with 23 points. He's standing by with Mike Trudell at Staples. All right, Kyle Kuzma. So just take us through what you saw on those last couple possessions. You got uh, everything on defense with AD. You got the kid, THC, able to hit that clutch shot. What was your view? Oh, uh, man, you know, uh, THC made a huge, huge shot, man. He's got some big balls for that one. Uh, step back three, nothing but net, uh, game on the line. And, um, <clears throat> you know, it, it was just great. Um, and then, you know, to counter that, uh, going back down on the other end, defensively did a great job. Uh, Wes Matthews shutting off uh, Derrick Rose and getting to one of their players that you know didn't really hit shots all night, and uh, that's how you get a win. You know, Kuz, you had it going early in this one. You got contributions from a lot of guys and very few playmakers on the court, right? Caruso goes out. You got no LeBron, no shooter. Uh, how did you guys find a way to just make enough plays considering the lack of playmaking? Well, I never thought I'd ever play point guard in the NBA, uh, but here we are. <laughs> you know, we just do a good job of just uh, playing off each other. Uh, you know, if you have a shot, shoot it. If not, drive it. Find the next open person. Um, and when you play that type of offense, you really don't really need a point guard. So, hey, The Knicks made it tough tonight. You end up pulling it out, of course, uh, here in overtime, Kuz. Uh, what do you guys have to do now for these final three games? We'll see about LeBron, right? We'll see about Caruso and everybody. We'll see about Schroeder. Uh, what do you guys have to do as you build momentum towards the playoffs? Uh, um, you know, we just gotta, you know, we just gotta keep playing. Um, you know, just keep trying to uh, develop good habits and get ready for the playoffs. That's the most important thing. Whether we're six seed, whether we're in the playing, you know, we're all just building that momentum um, and that clarity with one another to uh, succeed. All right, Kuz, we appreciate it, man. Yeah. Uh. All right, here's a uh, THT. The 13 points, four of nine from the field, two for two from three. By the way, those were both in overtime. The five rebounds, the 10 assists, eight of those points came in overtime. He also had seven turnovers. 
So you got it all from THT tonight. At times, guys, the inexperience, and then at times, uh, that cold-blooded, ice-in-the-veins type of mentality that makes the Lakers love him um, at 20 years old. He became the primary ball handler tonight. And Rob, uh, he stepped up in, in a big way. Like I said, you, you got every part of his game, the frustrating, <laughs> but also the glory. You know, it's, it's so weird when you watch some young players play. They just play. Yeah. They have, and I say he has no clue what's going on. I don't mean it in a negative way. Yeah. He's just playing, right? He's just going back to what he knows how to do. And sometimes it can be a great thing, and sometimes it can be a mm -hmm. bad thing. And you got to respect <laughs> this guy when he's on the court because he has all the moves in his repertoire. He can do so many things, and he is so talented in going to the hole. Sometimes you sit back, well, not you, but me. I'm sitting back, I'm like, no, no, no. Oh, he got to the hole, he made that, like that right there. He can get to that patented reverse layup so easy. And it's like nobody knows how to stop this kid because they don't have a book on him. So he's an exciting kid, but he can make you go up and down. He's a stock mm -hmm. market type of guy, though. Uh, he is, but I think that's what allows him to make those kind of plays at the end of game. To win him because he is fearless big game and that's what we've talked about him and he will take risks and he will make mistakes uh but then again he'll also hit a step back three in front of your face and win a game so yeah. it, it, it's pretty fun to watch but like rob said at times you'd be like no <laughs> <laughs> throwing the ball away and you know getting caught in traffic but he, he came he's, up big tonight he's developing he, yes. i mean he almost got the triple double he doesn't want i mean he almost had three more turnovers he would have had a a uh, 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 ugly triple double, but uh, you don't find young players like that that have the confidence, especially after you make a couple of mistakes or you make a, a, a turnover or something. Uh, a younger player, in most cases, will usually kind of shy away and try to, you know, make the right pass, do the right thing, get away from his aggressiveness. What I like about Tucker is mistakes don't bother him. <laughs> that much. I mean, he's, it seems like he gets more aggressive after he makes a mistake. And that's a good sign as a young player is learning how to play. He'll remember these moments and learn from them. But, yeah, he's, he really does have ice in his veins. And, you know, seven turnovers, not good, but it didn't phase him. You know, you know, after he made some crucial turnovers in the yeah. fourth quarter, normally he wouldn't take that big shot at the end. But. Guy's got he's got he's got he's got some some good confidence in his head. memory. And, and you know what's interesting is we were talking in the pregame show about Julius Randle, just the player he's become. He's gonna make an all NBA team, he's gonna be most improved, he's now an all-star. He was unbelievable tonight. He's the guy hitting their big clutch shots. You know, when you're a young player in this league and you're on a championship team, you often don't get these kind of opportunities like THT gets. You don't get to develop like this because if this is a normal game, LeBron's got the ball in his hands. Dennis Schroeder has the ball in his hands. AD has the ball in his hands. So on a night like tonight, you got to live and die with the young kid. And, and, he, and he came through. Oh, he came through big time. And this is all about getting him to understand the game and maturing for the playoffs because he's going to be vital in the playoffs, especially with all these safety and health protocols, so you never know who might be in Point. and out of the game. And think about tonight, even with Caruso, he just falls down on that that buttocks that's been a little bit um, injured, and he's out of the game. So you're going to need him to step up big like this, and you're also going to need him to learn how to run the